Hey everyone, I'm Northern Explorer. In today's video, I'm going to be installing my plumbing system in my four-wheel camper Hawk shell. The 20 gallon water tank that I chose fits nicely at the front of the camper. I have a separate video showing how I installed it. The faucet I chose has a nice modern look and is short enough to not interfere with the roof when in the lowered position. I went with an easy to clean stainless steel sink and made sure to caulk around the perimeter to prevent any spills from making their way into the cabinet below. So I've got my sink, faucet, and water tank installed. Now I just need to hook everything up with all of the plumbing, starting with the drain for the sink. So these are all of the parts that I'm working with. I'll leave a link in the description for most of these. With the setup that I have, I think I can disregard this piece. I'm going to need this rubber gasket. And then I'm going to have to put on some plumber's putty in order to put it into the sink properly. Whatever squeezes out, I can just remove easy enough. Drilling a hole for the gray water was the next step. I needed to make sure to not accidentally drill through the frame of the camper. Fortunately, I was able to find a YouTube video that documented the framing location. I was able to take a screenshot from this video to help me map out where my camper frame is located. I purchased a Sea Dog water outlet to be used as my sink's gray water drain. I didn't like how the retaining screw for the tether protruded out the back, preventing the outlet from sitting flush against the wall. I made a small modification in order to use one of the mounting screws as the anchor for the tether. A nylon barb adapter was then connected to the water outlet. I went and made this backing plate because I wasn't sure this, this wall was going to be strong enough to hold this, but the backing plate is going to require me to cut out the insulation and all of this and then stick this in here, which is not a huge step, but something I, I really don't want to do right now. So I'm just going to try this to see if it's strong enough. And if I see that it's uh, the wall is deflecting or whatever over time, I'll, I'll have to put this backing plate in. But it's not like there's any weight hanging on it. I just have the, the drain hose. So I might be able to get away with this. I'm sure Four Wheel Campers has the framing tied into this somehow. But uh, I guess time will tell if I'm going to require this or not. So I think the correct way to seal this would be with butyl tape. I don't have any in stock right now, so I'm going to put a little bit of plumber's putty around the base here and then silicone caulk around the outside. So I'm going to put the hose on before I stick this through so I don't have to put pressure on it from the inside once it's in place. So then all I'll have to do is put a pipe clamp on there. I think it's on there pretty tight. Hopefully that'll reach. All right, so far so good. I think 
we're good here. All right, gotta give it the water test. I think we're good. No leaks. Next step is to plumb up the faucet. Since I'm only running cold water, I'm going to need a T fitting to connect both of the water lines together. I just need to take the compression fittings off of the T fitting because the water lines have their own compression fitting. Next thing I need to do is to be able to mate this end with the hose. So I need these two pieces. So we're left with that. The water pump that I went with is self-priming, has a pressure switch, and delivers a relatively low flow rate of 1.2 gallons per minute. I purposely chose a pump with a low flow rate in order to extend my water supply as long as possible. Only nylon fittings should be used when making connections directly to the tank. A brass fitting has a higher likelihood of damaging the tank's plastic threads. So the next thing I'm doing is the water fill and I'm going to need a three and a quarter inch hole saw for this. So I'm going to be poking this through right down here and I have it marked where I'm 99% sure where the framing structure is according to that video that I saw online. So I'm gonna poke this through and hopefully I don't hit anything. I'm gonna start the hole from the inside that way if I do make a mistake and hit something I don't have a giant hole on the outside of my camper that everyone can see. All right, I did not hit the frame, so now I'm gonna go to the outside and drill it. So the water fill that I bought has a one and a half inch fitting, and my water tank has a one and a quarter inch fitting. So I bought an adapter, and I'm gonna use this hose to connect the two. see one problem I'm gonna have this is so thick that it doesn't leave me much room to put the breather hose on so I'm gonna have to figure that out oh okay, that's gonna have to do it probably don't even need the pipe clamp but I'll put it on just to be sure 
There, it's the extent of my adapter. I ended up shaving off most of the barbs on here, so we'll see if that helps make it fit. Probably not using the right part. On the water tank, this slides over no problem whatsoever. So let's see if we can make this work here. Call that good. Now I gotta put the breather hose on, which is also gonna be a tight fit. And I'm not even sure if I'm gonna have room for the pipe clamp, but for the breather hose, I'm not 100% sure I need it. Well, that's not too bad. Oh. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna try to mess with a pipe clamp on there. There is zero clearance. Next up is the low point outside drain. I needed to dismantle part of the lower cabinet in order to route the water line. When I drilled for the water fill and the sink drain, I was 99% sure I wasn't going to hit the frame. Now I'm drilling for the low point gravity drain on the back of the camper. I'm 100% sure I'm going to hit the frame on this. And I think that's just the way that four wheel campers has it set up. This whole area right here is framing. So I picked a spot that I think will work. So wish me luck. I'm going to use uh, three different drill bits to step up. Uh, the size in order to get my flange, that flange, to fit. Now, how tight is too tight? Try that and see if there's any leaks. So that's how it's sitting at the moment. I didn't go into too much detail about how all the plumbing is hooked up, but basically we got the vent, the fill, I got the water pump at the bottom, and the low point drain right here. Sending power to the water pump will be the last step. The switch I chose is flush mounted, backlit, and comes with its own wiring harness. I only made one minor mistake with my installation. A higher mounting location for the water fill would have been better. I overestimated how flexible the water fill hose would be and because of this the hose has a slight upturn. 
This in turn causes a small amount of backflow when filling the tank. I made a hose extension that has completely eliminated this problem. This is the same hose that I used for my drain and then I just got this from the hardware store. I also picked up a water filter because I know not every water source is going to be as clean as Lake Superior. And whenever I need to check the water level in the tank, I can just pop off the top and I can just stick my head in there to see how much water I have. That's it for this one. Like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.